Good morning and welcome to Casual Chef. Actually, it's Casual Chef. Usually I say Casual Chef Kitchen, but actually I'm in my office today. So welcome to the Casual Chef Kitchen slash office. Today is gadget time. I'm doing gadgets today. Um, sorry, it's a little dark, but I'm in my office, and if I use the overhead light, um, I get glare on, on, on my desk. We're actually using two cameras today, and I'm alone, so if I... So, if um, I see... If, I'm going to be kind of looking back and forth a couple different places, but I'm alone, and I'm going to be doing my best to make sure I can answer your questions and, and so forth. So, I'm going to do about a dozen gadgets today. Um, I realized last night when I was pulling things together, I don't use a lot of gadgets. I use a lot of knife work. That's that's the thing. Because in, in when you're working in a professional kitchen or a commercial kitchen, we tend to use um, knife skills versus, um, versus gadgets. Uh, there are some important gadgets in a, in a commercial kitchen. So th those aren't going to be covered here. There's a few. There's, a few, there's, there's actually a couple here that, we'll be, that I'll be covering today that we do use in a commercial kitchen. So I'm going to s switch cameras. This is me right here. This is what we're doing. Okay. This might seem like a real simple and rudimentary thing. R regular simple stainless steel tongs. Um, what I like about certain things about it, I like about tongs is this, um, this feature right here. This helps keep the tongs basically closed. So once you push that in, they open up. Okay. Um, you want stainless steel. These come in various sizes. Um, they even get smaller than this pair here. So um, this is the simple thing. Um, you definitely want stainless steel for, for uh, savory cooking, hot cooking, and so forth. Um, basically use the tool for the job. So th these are First, first item, stainless steel tongs with, because you can see this one doesn't have the the, 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 the the keeper, the closer, whatever. I don't know what to call it. The break. Um, but these are for like salads and, and appetizers. Three, three. Okay. That was the first item. The second item. A lot of controversy over um, can openers. This is my favorite can opener. Actually, the person who um, introduced me to this particular can opener it was Jim Ziggins. Um, I did a post on him about a few days ago. Um, he was a real inspiration to me and to many others here in the U.S. Sutter community. Um, this is a good OXO, A-O-X-O, OXO, good grips um, can opener. It's got really nice big handles, nice and they're a little bit soft and cushy. It's got the big handle to turn. This is the this is the I know this seems like a simple thing, but I remember growing up and, and having that that really tiny kind of the the can opener that hurts your hands. This is the one I prefer. Um, the big thing is is make sure you keep it clean. Okay, the next item. Ah, this is another OXO product, another Good Grips project product. This is basically a potato masher. The potato masher has been around for, God, forever. A long, long time. Um, there are several different styles. Um, see, when I grew up, my mother didn't use a hand masher. Um, she used to do, make mashed potatoes. She used um, a, hand, a hand mixer, an electric hand mixer. And that's how I learned. Um, then I found out over the years and, and, and so forth, that I like to hand smash, yes, yeah, smash, I smash my potatoes. I like to hand smash my potatoes because you still can get a, a creaminess to your, to your mashed potatoes, but you can also get nice little chunks. You know, I like a little bit of chunk in, in, in my, my mashed potatoes or smashed potatoes. But I also use this for a couple other things. Um, one, of the, one of the dishes I'm preparing for Christmas dinner is butternut squash smash. You can either roast or steam your cubed butternut squash. So then once I add all my ingredients, I use the hand smasher 
to do to to get the consistency I want. Okay, gives you gives you good workout too. All right, that's this one. This is another OXO good grips. Um, you can get it in pretty much any any good kitchen store. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go back to an old and trusted. This guy here, potato peeler. This is the old fashioned, good old potato peeler. Um, when I would go in and see Jim at, at his store, he would always hand me um, peelers to try. And I have an, I have an OXO Good Grips. Uh, Robin loves it. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I like this handle. Yes, this one's a little rusted. I probably should get a new one. Um, but this, this part doesn't touch the food, so. But I like this handle. I like this system. This is one of my favorite tools. A funny story. Jim, would, Jim and his staff would sell peelers left and right. And they would always, the, the manufacturer would always put a little piece of black, blue plastic film to protect people from not cutting themselves with these, with these sharp blades. And Jim would always get a phone call or they'd come in and go, I just, this thing just doesn't work. This just does not work. What's, and I, I don't understand. And they would always have to ask, did you peel off that plastic, blue plastic protector? And of course the customer would always go, oops, no, I didn't know. So every time they would sell a peeler at Jim's store, they would tell the customer, make sure you take off basically the peeler condom off of the, off the blade. So this is, like I said, this is one of my, actual one of my favorites. I just, because this is not just a peeler, but you can use this little end, this little V-shaped end here. You can use this like, it's like eyes and potatoes. It's good to dig out the eyes. So yeah, it's versatile. And I use this everything on carrots, potatoes, butternut squash. Actually, yeah, I, I tend to use knives now. But the, the, this is not just a potato, pe potato peeler. This is a vegetable peeler. Okay? Again, one of my favorites. Um, this might seem like a simple, simple thing again. This is a, uh, this is a Rubbermaid spatula, but what makes, I love spatulas. I've used everything from really teeny tiny ones up to, you know, up to 16 inches, depending on the, what you're doing. But what makes this, this particular model special is the red handle. The red handle means you can use it while cooking hot food. The handle won't melt, and the, the actual blade or the spatula piece will not melt as well. I don't. It goes up to a certain temperature. I don't remember what it is, but th this is one of my favorite. This the, the heat series um, spatulas are my favorite. Um, you can get them in, in Rubbermaid, and a couple other uh, manufacturers make the heat resistant. They're not heat proof. You can you can still burn them with a flame. But they're heat resistant. You can use them in cold or you can use them in hot. This is another one of my favorite things to do, is, and I, depending on what I'm cooking. Okay. Any questions out there for me? I've got the feed right next to me, so you can, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Okay. There is a bit of a delay from when I'm actually talking to. Um, to what's actually popping up on my screen over here. There is actually about a 10, 10 to 12 second delay. Um, the next gadget that I'm going to present is the kitchen shear. Basically kitchen scissors. The kitchen shears, th the most important thing that you want to, there's two things you want to remember about kitchen shears. Okay. One, you want stainless. Pretty much anything you use that's metal in a kitchen, utensil-wise, utensil-wise, gadget-wise, and so forth, you want stainless, okay? Uh, the second thing, now there are all types of shears. There's poultry shears, there's vegetable shears. This is the, this is the generic all-around kitchen shear, okay? This, the, the biggest part in here is, if I flip this over, you'll see this little, little keyway here. So what I can do is actually, for cleaning purposes, 
I can break it down into two pieces. So you don't get food in the joint, okay? Um, I use these for everything from when I'm tying a roast or, or a turkey um, to opening up frozen pizza. We use these a lot. Um, there's a little piece here. But a lot of people don't realize what this is right here, this little notch right there, that little notch. This is so you can cut small chicken bones or turkey bones. Okay, you can stick it in there and go click, and it'll, it'll cut it or break it. The other thing that's on here, inside the handles is these two serrated, two serrated pieces. That's for helping open cans and bottles. Um, you'll find some kitchen shears, they'll have a bottle opener on the end, and they'll have a screw, like a flathead screwdriver on this end. So this is, the, again, this, this is um, a set of Dexter. Um, Dexter makes wonderful um, home use and commercial use knives and shears and other um, kitchen gadgets and so forth. But a lot of commercial stuff, but really good stuff. Um, I actually got this set um, when I was in culinary school years ago. And it's still around. I still use them. These are, these are, our, these are our primaries. Okay. Okay, and let's see. Oh, we, most of us have been to Olive Garden, right? So you'll recognize this. This is a Xylus hard cheese grater. So we use these because it's got a drum, a drum grater. And these are used for hard cheeses like Parmesan and Reggiano and a couple you know, other cheeses. You can use it for chocolate. You can use it for um, uh, nuts. But you can see this, the, the teeth in this are very, very small. Okay. So basically you put it back together. It's really simple. Just a twist and a half. So what you do is you load it up. Cheese like that. You've all seen this used in, in Olive Garden and other restaurants. You just turn it and it comes out beautifully on the other on the, on the open end. Okay. And I'm going to go into probably one of my other favorite. Um, you actually saw me use this. This is a microplane. This is a, it's a grater. But as you can see, it's really, really fine. This has a lot of uses. You can use it like the, the Xylus grater. You can use it for hard cheeses. Um, when I used it in a, in a recent video, I used it to grate down or to emulsify, or not emulsify is the wrong word, but to, um, to shave down some fresh ginger. You can use it with things like nutmeg. A lot of different things. Okay, um, microplane's been around uh, for quite a while. They make not just this one. This is actually the Zester Grater. Um, I do store mine in the in in the sheath. Keep it nice and clean and nice and sharp. Um, you can hurt yourself with these. I've done it. If if, if it can be done in a kitchen, I've done it. <laughs> um, Many, when you're working with a lot of sharp objects, knives, graters, zesters, you know, and so forth, you are going to get cut eventually. And then you will continue to get cut. No matter how good your knife skills are or how careful you are, sometimes life happens. So, but the microplane is really good. It's a really nice piece to have in your kitchen because it's, it's good for just topping something off. You can use it again with chocolate and any hard, really good hard, you know, it's like the, this is a hard piece. So, so this, you know, it gives you a nice, oops, drop my nut. So um, this is great for nice sprinkling of like chocolate or uh, cheese over some, over, over a dish. Okay. And I'm going to put this away. Oh, 
Okay. One of my all-time favorite TV cooks, he doesn't like to be called a chef because he's never been to culinary school or has ever worked in a commercial kitchen as a chef. And that would be Alton Brown. Um, I love Alton. He's a great guy. Um, I've never met him personally, but he's kind of like me. He works in the entertainment industry. Actually, I'm going to switch cameras. Hi, Alton Brown. Um, matter of fact, what's behind me is Robert and I's collection of cookbooks. And my, these are my per personal binders of recipes that I've either developed or, um, or that I have acquired over, over, the, over the many years, you know. So we got plenty, we got lots of books, lots of magazines. Um, okay. This book here, let's see if we can just get the shine off it. This is Alton Brown's book, Gear for Your Kitchen. This is a wonderful book. Basically, it's doing some of the things that I'm doing right now, and that's explaining about gadgets. Um, Alton Brown has an interesting philosophy about gadgets. There's, he uses this term called unitasker. And basically, a unitasker is a, an item, like a spatula, that only has one use. Okay, This is for mixing and stirring and scooping. I know that sounds like more than one, but basically it's one. Okay, like tongs. Tongs are only good for one thing. Pick the stuff up. That's all they do. Okay, so in the world of the culinary world, there are lots of gadgets that are unitaskers. They only have one purpose. Now, some unitaskers, you, that's all you, because that's all you need. You know, there's. You, you, nothing re, nothing replaces what the, pr the purpose of a tong does. Even though there's several different styles of, of the tong, there's tongs and tongs and tongs and tongs. Okay. But then there are super, what I call super unit taskers. And those are the unit taskers that only do literally one thing. Like the microplane is not a super unit tasker. It's not a unit tasker at all. Yes, it only does one thing, but it also... does one thing with multiple types of food product, you know, cheese, chocolate, uh, hazelnut, so forth, you know. So this, this can handle more than just one food product or one food item, okay? Um, so what you have to remember or try to remember is when you're, when you're buying gadgets, is, can you do, let me ask you this, can, is it easily clean? Can that, add, can that gadget be easily cleaned? Because some gadgets are really pain in the butt to clean. And that's part of being a unitasker. So, is it worth the money? Um, do you really need it? <laughs> um, I'm always reminded by, by my wife, Robin, that, do you really need that? You've got great knife skills. So, because it really does boil down to, do you really need it, and can you use something else to do the same job? Um, so, just kind of keep that in mind. There's, when you go into some of these, these kitchen stores or these home stores, I'm not going to say who they are, because uh, one thing, if you've noticed in, in the Casual Chef Corner and in, in Casual Chef Page, I only plug certain things in, 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 my, in my, my group and page. I am a huge supporter of local restaurants that are locally owned or a very tiny chain. And if we had our own kitchen store here, like we used to, I would be plugging them. Um, matter of fact, just before I came on the air, I had, uh, let me see if I can look it up. Uh, where'd it go? I am having, without going into too much detail here, I am having 
uh, I think it's E, E and, E and N. Uh, they're a local spicery. But they do um, uh, hot pepper spices. So I'm actually having some delivered to me. They have some left over. So I, I'm have, it's actually coming to me. So I know I'm getting a little bit off topic here with gadgets, but I really want everybody to know that I really do support the local restaurants. Um, I'm not going to start listing them because there's too many to list <laughs> because this is a hard time. And I really want to let you know, my followers and friends, that I really do support the local restaurants. And matter of fact, I was at Staples yesterday and I noticed a food truck. I've seen it around. So I went over and I said, hey, can I get a business card? And the, guy, the guys were like, what? I said, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm a local personal chef, culinary trainer. I says, I've got this great group on Facebook, 500 plus members. We're at 525 the last time I checked, which is just a, few, a little bit ago. And I says, hey, check it out. Join, and you can post for your business. And they were, they were shocked. And I had another business, same thing today. Another taco, another, it was a taco truck. Um, and they were like thrilled and they were from uh, Auburn so if you have friends who who own restaurants uh, small grocery stores or anything food related really please invite them invite them into to the casual chef corner and let them let them um, promote themselves because we all have to do self-promotion. Okay, so back to Alton. One of the things that's in this book is these guys right here. These make a difference. If you're a baker, there's not a lot of this in, in savory, but there is. But this is a baker's friend. This comes in two sizes. It comes in little itty bitty. Actually, I'm going to switch switch cameras. And go back. These guys. Okay. These come in two sizes. This goes from, let me see. Should have looked at this before, huh? Um, this goes to two cups. Goes to two cups. So what you do, is you draw these out, and you set it to where you want it. Let's say, okay, I'm going to put this at one and three quarter. You fill this up. You can. Eat. This is not for dry. But this is not for dry material. This this is not for flour, sugar, or anything like that. This is things that are hard to uh, measure, and you should be able to get all of that ingredient out of your your measuring cup. Corn oil, or uh, sorry, I'm sorry, back up. Corn syrup, molasses. Items like that, basically gooey liquids, are great with these because this is a plunger. And so basically you have this rubber seal that when, when inserted, so what you do, you basically turn these, turn these up. So when you fill it, you, you squeeze it down to get all of it so you can take it like a, a, a uh, like a flat spatula, an offset spatula, and scrape it off. So that way you get 99.9% of the goodies that are in this. And this one, because this goes goes from basically zero cup to two cup, and this one doo -doo 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 -doo, is tablespoons. So two tablespoons. Fill it up, squeeze it down. These are really cool. When I do bake, which is not that often. Uh, I'm a savory. I'm a savory chef, not a baker. I know how to bake, just not big stuff. Okay, these are really cool. These are actually pretty reasonably priced. Um, most good kitchen stores and or family home stores have these. Okay, uh, dishwasher safe, blah blah blah. You know the usual stuff. Okay.
Any questions so far? I see we've got Miss Sarah, Miss Elizabeth, Miss Susanna, Mr. Scott with us. I love having you guys here. Um, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, next, next fun gadget for me. Okay, this little guy. You're probably thinking to yourself, now if you know what this is, please don't. Um, this, this was invented by a gentleman who was a home cook, home chef, home cook. And he had issues. He, 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 had, he was thinking to himself, there's got to be a better way to peel fresh garlic cloves. Now I know you have never seen me work with fresh garlic cloves because there are secrets to that. And I do, some people would say I cheat, but I don't. Um, so this gentleman, okay, we're going to, because I don't have any fresh garlic in my house. I have to say that. I'm going to use this as a, as a clove of garlic. So you got that, you got that peel you got to get off. Okay. So what he started off with, because just basically it's, it's rubber. Right? What he started off with was a bicycle inner tube. And then, so what you do, you take your simulated or real clove of garlic, you put it in this rubber tube, and then with some just some pressure, you roll it. And you'll hear that peel go crinkle, 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 crinkle. And then so you, do, so you just go do this. Boop, boop, bye bye. So it'll come down, so you'll get your your peeled garlic clove and the the peel in your hand. So he came up with this. It's, a, it's obviously thicker than a, a than an inner tube, but these are wonderful. They clean up really easy. You know, you just you rinse them out with water. You know, you put a little bit of water, you know soap and blah blah blah. These are a time saver. Now, I said I have some secrets and tips about garlic. Okay, as most of you know, I just got back into cooking in the last what, six weeks, two months. Okay, I'm lazy. <laughs> um, and I'm also kind of easing myself back into cooking. Um, you're probably thinking to yourself, really? You're making wonderful things and these really complicated things, or, or I don't know if you're thinking complicated, I don't even know that. Um, but I use right now I'm using jarred garlic you know and actually way back when um, if you notice on the casual chef corner um, I share when I can when I see them a wonderful produce company in Sacramento called Produce Express they are the premier produce supplier for all commercial, or I, should, I shouldn't say all, most commercial kitchens, including schools, hospitals, restaurants of all types and, and flavors. Um, and they try to source all of their produce within the Sacramento region, down in the San Joaquin Valley. Um, so I actually got to go to, a, a, several years ago, I got to go to a, an open house they have open house for uh, for all the culinary students in the area and uh, professional, you know, restaurant restaurant chefs and cooks and, and so forth. So um, the garlic suppliers were there, and fresh garlic and jarred garlic. What you get in a in a jar of in a jarred garlic? Oops, putting shadows on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> been up since 4.30. Um, what's in the jar is real garlic. It's good, genuine stuff. It's got, usually it's kind of packed in a little water or a little bit of oil. It's, it's an easy way to, to, to save some time um, when preparing a meal. Now, what a lot of people don't realize in commercial kitchens that we don't peel garlic because we get our garlic pre-peeled. Um, the 
garlic folks in Gilroy, California, that's where most of our garlic comes from here in California, especially Northern California, um, they do a lot of business with pre-peeled garlic cloves. And it comes in bags from this big to this big. Just like in any business, when you're working in a kitchen, time is money. And we, you will not see a, a commercial kitchen, a good commercial kitchen, using peel, you know, regular garlic, you know, right off the, you know, in the, in the big head. Yeah, we get it in the bag. Um, so it's not cheating. When they when they peel the garlic, they using they're using um, steam and basically it's super hot water. It's not cooking because it's done, it's done so fast that it's not cooking the garlic. Okay, so it's not cheating. Jarred garlic or pre-peeled garlic is not cheating. So if you see me use um, jarred garlic, it's because I'm trying to save some time, a little bit of headache, and I peeled enough garlic in my lifetime that I don't need to do it anymore. So I actually recommend it for anybody. You can buy this pre, in. In most grocery stores, most supermarkets, you can get this, you can buy the, the, the pre-peeled garlic in a, in a small bag. It's actually very worth it. The one you want to look for, to be quite honest, is the one, there's, there's, there's a manufacturer out there, or a grower, that has pre-peeled garlic, and they come in these little itty bitty vacuum-sealed packets. You know, there's like six, six or seven cloves of garlic in there. So you, so you're not so it's, you're just only using those one you know, at a time you know at a time instead of exposing a whole bag. So that's what you want to look for. Okay, next gadget. Let me see here. Do, do, do. Put some stuff away. I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to switch cameras. Okay. Half sheet pan. That's not the gadget. What's the gadget in here is this mat. Now, you've seen these. I'm sure you have. If you're, if you're, if you're, a, if you like to cook, these are. This is a silicone baking mat. Um, you see these in home kitchens. You see them in commercial kitchens. You see them in restaurants. You know, a lot of times in restaurants, because yeah, these these silicone mats tend to be on the pricey side. But they last forever. Well, almost forever. If you use it wrong, yeah. But a lot of, a lot of the, in commercial kitchen, baking, um, even um, even some home cooks, they use parchment paper in their in their sheet pans. Um, it's like this sheet pan, as you can see, it's super clean because I use silicone mats. Now, the reason why I bring this up, and actually, this is one of the last items I pulled out of my kitchen. I actually got this. This is this is the called this is the Update brand. You can see right there the Update. There's French mats. Those are the expensive ones. The ones that are coming out of France. These are made in America, in the United States, and these are a third the price. And where I got this is at a restaurant supply store in Sacramento. I have like, we have, I think we have like six of these. I, I, I do bake, Robin bakes. They're beautiful for, for cooking, for baking. Oh my God, they're beautiful. But you can put french fries on this. You can put, you can put chicken on it, vegetables. If, you, if you're not gonna use, you know, don't wanna spend the money on this mat, because the mat this size, the front ones that come out of France, and you, you know them by, by the, the writing. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, or or if you can't find this brand, the Update brand, start using parchment paper. Parchment paper is a infused paper that lets things not stick to the metal, because this is aluminum. Parchment paper, you can get. You can buy parchment paper in a roll, or you can buy it in a sheet. You, you can get it in, in, in the half the half sheet pan sheet, 
half, I'm sorry, half sheet pan size. Okay, I got that out. Took me twice. Okay, so this is what I this is this is what I really recommend if you're doing any kind of baking or, or roasting on sheet pans and whatnot. It's a must. Okay. Next item. This is one of my favorite. This was another one that Jim turned me on to. This is a meat tenderizer. Look at the blades. Ooh. Sharp, shiny. Basically, you. This is a meat tenderizer. So basically, what you're doing is you're 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 introducing holes into your proteins. These are sharp. They are very sharp. Um, this allows juices to get into the fluids to get into. Um, the meat itself and so forth. But yeah, this, these are a great, great tenderizer um, device. And I got two more gadgets, so hang with me. My next favorite. This is my marble. Now, I'm not a pharmacist. My marble mortar and pestle. You can use this for dry or wet. Uh, you primarily use it for dry, but this is where you grind your dry spices. You can you, you can put you can put garlic in here, like regular like Hulk loves the garlic, but you want to cut it up first a little bit. But the, the recommendation if, this is nice. This is a small one. This is a baby one. You can get up to about yay big, about that big. Um, but if you're going to use a mortar and pestle, yes, you have this action. But if you put a little bit of some kosher salt in here with your dried spices it helps with that grinding action okay um, and my last thing i want to cover because a lot of us are pre pre preparing big proteins in, in the next few days um, thermometers are really really important um, you know, we don't want anybody to get sick, and we want to make sure our meat's done to a certain level. You know, medium, medium rare, rare, well done. But that's okay. There's there's several different styles. I'm going to go. I'm basically I'm trying to. I just want to talk about the stick style today. These are two different stick styles. One's a digital. This one hasn't been used in a long time. It's really filthy. I'm embarrassed. And then you have the analog style, the dial style. Okay. I don't like the digitals because you can't, they're hard to calibrate. Um, with the analog style or the dial style, on the back, right, there it is, right there. Did you see that nut right there? You can take a wrench. And what you do is you get a nice like a pint-sized glass of water, fill it with ice and water, let it sit for a few minutes so it gets to that 32 degrees, because frozen is at 32. With the combination of, the, of a glass full of ice and water, it will hit, it'll go to 32. So you just basically take the wrench, put it on the nut, submerge that into the water, and you can you can calibrate it. Okay. Very important. Um, if you drop one of these, either one of them, the digital or the dial style, if you, if you drop it or jar it real badly, you should calibrate it. Okay? Because basically this, these are, this, especially in the dial style, there's basically a spring in here that, with the element that's in the, within the, th the, the thermometer shaft that tells it what the temp is, okay? It reacts to the, to the heat or the cold, okay? And what I've done in my kitchen, hopefully don't, this doesn't shine too bad, doesn't, this is a temperature chart for proteins. Um, I, it's real handy, I just found it online, printed it, and um, um, Robert and I are fortunate enough that we have a laminator here at the house, so this hangs up in my kitchen. Because I can't remember all these numbers, and I don't expect anybody to. But it's good. It's good to have something like this in your in your kitchen somewhere. 
And most good cook, cookbooks like the, uh, the Betty, Better Homes and Gardens and the Betty Crocker and you know, the, 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 the really good cookbooks um, have some kind of uh, uh, charts in it. And this is, this is what the USDA re recommends. For, for these meat temps, okay? And, and that is gadget time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. Um, hopefully I wasn't too boring. But I will be doing this again. One of my next live um, sessions will be knives. One of my favorite subjects. One of my absolute favorite subjects is knives. And I'm talking kitchen knives. Um, there's a lot of myths about knives. There's um, a lot of, a lot of, usually a lot of questions about knives, what's good, what's bad. There's a lot of battles. There's a, it's really funny because you, you, you can get six cooks or chefs in a room and ask them what's the best brand. And you'll get six different answers. Knives are personal preference, folks. It's, that, it's bottom line, personal preference. So next session, it's going to be, instead of gadget time, we're going to have knife time. So I hope you enjoy your afternoon, and I will see you later. And I'm actually, this is going to be reposted on the website or the, in, the, in the Casual Chef Corner and in the Casual Chef uh, Facebook page. And, oh, Big news for, for the folks of you who have stuck with me throughout this last 40 minutes. Casual Chef has a new website coming out probably later on this afternoon. So give it, they're still putting the final touches on it. But if you go to casualchef.net, that's casualchef.net, Casual Chef is having a brand new website and I didn't build it this time. I had professionals build it. So keep that in mind and I say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and enjoy the rest of your day. And this is The Casual Chef.